can reduce it. Um, and the reason we want to find the original size of the file archive is because the package installer tells you it when you install the package. Um, that's basically what's necessary. That's, that's one of those. There's no sort of one does. The packages contain post install scripts, the package description, and generally the packages are monolithic, which are all in one package. Typically, separate packages are not, um, it, it generally doesn't have the development packages as you have with most of the distributions. Um, this can be good and bad, depending on the way you look at it. It's good because it reduces the amount of dependency you need, but it's bad because it means if you're trying to build, how, you're trying to build a slim down system, it's not that easy because you need to you know, you've got a lot of stuff installed which you may not actually need. <coughs> if you're building your own packages, it's up to you whether you want to make them monolithic or whether you want to make separate packages. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's have a look at the package management tools. Um, after the initial operating system installation, we've got um, a number of tools available. They're simple to use. They're really not. Generally, doesn't, they don't support anything other than basic tools such as R, G, Z, um, and a couple of other tools. Um, so we've got the three tools, install package, which will install packages, remove packages, which removes them, and upgrade package, which will upgrade already in existing, sorry, will upgrade packages that are already installed with new packages. And finally we have explode package, which um, isn't really a package management tool. Um, basically as you can see it extracts, it's got CG says, a package file into the current directory. Um, this is mainly used in, in the actual build scripts, but you can use it, you could say it's a package management tool because you can extract a package or, 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 or a binding package, make some changes, and rebuild it with make package, which I'll talk about later. I'm just going to show you a quick demonstration of actually um, these packages in use so you've got the feel <coughs> of the simplicity of the package service. Right, so, so just remove the package. the package description. So generally the package descriptions show various useful information about the package. Um, we actually upgrade a package. So if I just upgrade my FMP package. So this is just to give you a feel of just how basic the actual package the system is. So as you can see, I've had an existing version, which was uh, 3.0.7, <coughs> which told me what to do. So it's deleted the old, basically the old stuff, uh, which is the doctor directory, and just installed the new one over the top, because none of the other files are there. Okay. So those are the command line tools, install package, remove package, upgrade. <coughs> We've also got a cursor based tool called package tool, PKG tool, which is basically a front end to the command line tools. So from here, we can install packages from the current directory, block these, or like, to make it to remove them actually. Um, you can, uh, you can remove, remove, remove packages that are already installed, and you can view the list of contents within the package. Um, which I think most people tend to find is the most useful option of this. Because um, it just displays the package uh, description, as you've already seen, and the contents of the contents of the package. So basically, it has to be the package. Let's have a look at the package anatomy. So, this is um, na uh, names of packages, version, and the building, and so on. So, package naming scheme. Um, it's very something to see. It's fairly familiar. It's probably familiar with you. It's pretty similar to most other distributions. 
So it's package name, hyphen, version number, architecture number, build number, dot tgz, because it's a much easier to count on. In Slackware, we have two conventional distributed packages. Um, for example, with Autocom, as you see there, this is a single application. Within this package, Autocom 2.59, the, no, there's nothing else in this package other than the contents of Autocom. There's nothing else in it. So that's quite normal, you're probably quite familiar with that. However, if you look at TCP IP, for example, final example there, this is what I, I call a bundle of utilities. There is no single program called TCP IP. Instead, this package consists of a variety of programs written by a variety of authors, simply bundled together in a big pot and packaged up. Um, generally, this package just contains the most useful TCP IP utilities that most <coughs>
So something that comes now at next slide, which I'll give you a second while I have a drink, but yes, the other information. Okay, there are, there are a number of lines highlighted in blue for a reason. Um, these are because they're rather important. For example, you can see the top one we have is the root directory. And we have user bin, user doc, user man, user. Um, and install user directory. Um, we'll discuss it uh, later on why these are highlighting these, but generally, if you look at the um, permissions on the left hand side and the, root, and the owner and the group, so the user bin, the user bin directory, we can see it's owned by groups of top bin. So next, let's just have a look at the. Um, this is the sample package description, as you saw earlier when I removed the install package. So it's basically just a simple package. It's just a simple description. Um, this is, as I said before, the package description contains most useful information you can find about how you So here, this is the pseudo package. And it tells you basically where you, which file you should edit in order to change um, pseudo. This, is, this uh, description is always displayed when you install the package. Okay, the other elements of packages, besides the things I've already talked about, is the post install scripts. It's worth noting that they are, are post install scripts, they are not pre installed scripts. Um, there no, there's no provision in Slackware packages or Slackware package management for pre installed scripts. Um, so, the first one is the install slash doings.sh, which you saw, uh, saw in the previous slide. Um, generally, in this script, we do things such as create sim links, add new users to passwords, shadow and root files in the OpenSSH package, for example. Um, and we also shift config files around. So, if you install a package that has, um, say, etc., such foo.com, most packages will have a foo.com.new. So, when you install it, it doesn't override the existing config files already installed. So this script, the new install well, script, will deal with this. If it doesn't find the existing file, it will be named the .new file, the .com file. Um, the second one is the setup script. Um, this is so the, the, the first one is a non-interactive script. You don't interact with it at all. It just does its stuff uh, and it finishes. The second script is a cursive-based interactive script. Um, such scripts like this, you'll find in the Apache package. In the one SSL package. Um, these are basically helper scripts for you to help configure the package in certain ways. So you can, you know, if you're in the one SSL uh, script, you can set up the IP address and the name of the uh, website and so on. These are actually less common than the install to do scripts. The third script should no longer be used. In fact, it doesn't really work properly. Support for is still there. These scripts are used to only be run by the OS installer. And they'll have to be used in 1993, 1994 era. And they're now deprecated. And you won't find a single one of these scripts in any packages in later versions of Slackware. Okay. So let's have a look now at the package policies and guidelines. The main binary directory are CHO and root bin. Um, there's no particularly good reason for this anymore. Um, it was based on a really old standard which doesn't actually exist anywhere. Um, because it's mainly a cosmetic thing these days, but it's still the done thing. Um, packet, uh, sorry, um, info, command pages, and kernel modules are GPUs <coughs> in service space. Hard links are converted to soft links, um, although some packages you'll, you'll find that it isn't the case. Um, GLIPC, for example, is one that uh, has many, many hard links. Uh, mainly because it has many hard links. Um, um, soft links are converted to shell script code uh, within the GUIDs, within the uh, GUIDs script, one of the closed install scripts. Um, the soft links code in the actual shell script code is created by the main package program, which builds the package, builds the uh, GZIP car files. I'll talk about main package shortly. Um, static archives, shared <coughs> objects, and binaries are script in general. Um, and the Perl local dot pod files are true, <coughs> as opposed to the distributions you should have included Perl local dot pod files. Um, HTML command pages are removed from user dot, either of these are not trying to pass. What's really worth noting is 
is that the software uses slash USR dot USR <coughs> info and USR map. These are not FHS compliant. Um, so it's really worth noting that about Slackware. Um, Slackware does, however, maintain um, symlinks in user share, which is where every other distribution on the keeps these directories. So user share dot mm -hmm. user share. But in the Slackware package, you will not find documents in user share. They will be in user dot user share. Okay, let's have a look at package dependencies because they're really, really like In software, you shouldn't have any dependencies because the most the recommended option, installation options of software is a full installation. However, you don't actually need to do a full installation. My well, laptop there certainly doesn't have a full installation of software on it. Um, this is the recommended option which will actually lead you to not have any dependencies. Um, that, that means you, you shouldn't use your library? No, it's the package installation. <coughs> Um, the official package um, tools do not handle dependencies, and they never will. Um, there are third parties, there are third party programs that can help with dependency resolution, such as Soiree and Slack here. Um, but they in order to really make use of those packages, um, sorry, make use of those utilities, the packages tend to require additional metadata, um, which yeah, the reason that uh, will be things like uh, this, this package depends on a certain version of this other package. Basically the same as every other package at all, which is dependencies. Um, with the initial software packages, dependencies are often noted in the SACJS file, which is the package description, or in the config files, um, which is especially the case with the Apache package. You will find listed in the config file, this package requires this, this, and this. Um, one of the things about software as well is that we have Package called AAA install elements. Um, this package <coughs> provides four dependencies. So if you intend, if you install this installing software, if you decide you know better than the installer, you can go through and make up a system that basically won't boot. So this package helps you your system boot. It contains um, some of the most core libraries such as Zetlib, um, libpmg, Perlcat, and Versus, and Linux really too. Just to name a few. So that's basically a helper uh, package. Okay, let's talk about security <coughs> packages now. Really exciting part of the presentation. Okay, this is the first of the, um, for this section of the presentation, I'm going to cover the methods used to build the official software package. Um, I'm not going to talk about other ways that you could build packages. This is just how package holding is built. Um, I should also assume that you've got the rudimentary knowledge of how to build and source software that to configure it and install it itself. But first, before we do that, let's have a look at what the build script is, my definition of a build script. A build script is essentially a set of instructions, either it's a make file, spec file, uh, or a software build script. So firstly, we'll prepare a build location, such as a directory, a package and location, which is also just a directory. Um, We'll then proceed to extract the source archives, configure the source, compile the software, install the <coughs> components into the packaging location, apply the software packaging policies such as CHO grouping, GZIP, uh, info, annotations, and so on. And finally, we'll create the final package. So, before moving on, we'll have to look at make package. This is a program that actually produces the .tgz file, the .gz file archives. Make package produces produces the .tgz from the contents of the present working directory. Um, make package converts soft links into shell script code, which will go into the install, sorry, the yeah, yeah, install of the slash the It does a rudimentary check for the <coughs> files as well, so it will highlight any file performance of the file earlier in the Although bear in mind that it doesn't, it's just a highlight so you don't actually have to, it doesn't matter if you've got the file. There's obviously some new files are there as placeholders. So the normal um, syntax for make packages, as you can see there, um, dash L is Y, tells MK, uh, make package to convert any uh, soft links into shell script code. And the dash CN tells make package not to CH root, sorry, CH own root root and CH mod. Uh, 75 
Um, you wouldn't, the reason you're doing this is like, well, the reason I did that is because if you, did, if you actually told the make package to change all of the file ownership to the group, <coughs> you'd actually be breaking that at the bottom. In terms of the packaging. So this is why you always do this. Um, as you can see, I could actually say that you can make package convert something to shell code. Um, you know that if you have to do this, you can include something in your package. However, it's worth noting that it completely breaks remove package. If you try to remove a package that has um, soft links actually inside the power archive, remove package has no idea that they're there and will leave send links screwed around the party. So you should always uh, convert the soft links into shell script code unless you want. <coughs> that only works if the soft links are
Now this guy actually just builds the INFD package. He doesn't make it. But I do accept this one. So as you can see, that's basically the package build. So package is a uh, Packaging policy to your package contents. 
yes, that fact does have a whole host of options, but in general, you just want to use dash hash or do a P, which um, would not have been sexual. Dash Q is a shortcut for setting more than cyber policy, and dash P is a way of writing the chain. And you just give it a fill switch, that's all you do. Um, <laughs> it is worth noting that whilst I say slash track build reference packages using the dot it doesn't always. Um, so I'm just going to tell you what I think everyone tells me to work. It's not. Um, with the, with the dot build scripts, most of them are fairly old. Um, and we tend to find that Patrick makes a number of changes after it's installed into the file system. And we don't know what these changes are because they're not documented anywhere. Um, it's generally, you generally tend to, you tend, you generally tend to find that there aren't that many fixes. You'll do things such as remove files or move a file into a different place, which you've no idea about because you can actually compare the differences between what Slack packages is and what Slack packages is. You'll be rebuilding an official package. But generally, it doesn't happen. But this is a thing. So finally, we'll finish off with a quick checklist if you're interested in. <coughs> Remember that Slackware directory locations aren't FHS compliant. So that's the user dot directory, user in the project, and those are the things that are important. The install slash Slackware package description part is 13 lines maximum. Uh, most people think it's 11, but it's not, it's actually 13. Uh, and it's 7 characters required. If you're building your own package, you just take a template from Slackware source. That's what I just want to talk about a couple years and just work on That's the easiest way of doing it. It actually has a little handy rule for the template. Sometimes people have difficulties when building packages um, in that when they install the package they've built, they find that the package description doesn't actually get displayed. And generally, this is, this is because they've made a typo in the package name. Um, the actual, as you saw in a previous slide, is should be package name colon and then the information about that. And some people find that they've met other kind of work. And that, that's generally the case. With the install scripts, we're doing SH scripts, we <coughs> only ever use relative path names. Um, so that means that if you have something like, um, <coughs> what you do, you shouldn't assume that you're in the directory of the file system. Because what happens is, the packages, for example, during the installation, the packages are installed into a pseudo root. They're not installed over you know, the installers. Area. So what happens is when install package CDs into a pseudo root, extracts it, and it assumes that pseudo root is the root file system. So in other words, you can, if you wanted to install a package onto into a different area of your file that is called directory, you can just you can specify a separate root directory when you install a package. So you can do install package dash root, give it the uh, root, the new root path, and install. That is why you shouldn't even go to the Open. Your scripts should generally also be ash compatible. This is because the software installer uh, uses ash as its shell. Uh, um, although, it's generally, for yourself, you can use whatever you want to build your package. You can use bash, generally, minor, minor or bash and minor. Um, but generally, the scripts are fairly simple. Um,
And finally, if you wanted to, if you were rebuilding a software package, uh, the official world, the easiest way is to compare your package with the official world. Just do a dip between the two, the outputs of the two, and see if yours has inherited any files that shouldn't be there, uh, or is missing any files that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be missing. So in summary, Cyclo build scripts are simple bash scripts. <coughs> there are two types of them, the slash build and the dot build, with the dot build being generally phased out uh, as soon as possible. Um, the build scripts for the software are available in the slash source tree. And I've tried to keep this presentation pretty high level, as you can notice, I'm sure. Um, I have written an overview document which is included in the slash which goes far more in depth, especially into software building system, than I could possibly do in the presentation. So I advise you to read that if you're interested in learning more. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Any questions? Uh, you send uh, that um, in uh, the domains.sh uh, script. Yeah. Uh, every pass uh, should be uh, uh, should be relative. Yeah. Uh, from uh, uh, relative to what to uh, the rules. Yeah, but the, the, yeah, they should be absolute. In other words, yeah. so um, have a look at the one. Inside where we have the file called the manifest file, um, in this manifest file, it lists every single package in Slackware extra, in its extracted form. So if you use LDD, for example, to find um, 
a library, a shared library, or whatever. You can see if any sort of missing, you could look at this manifest file and find it in here. As you see, it lists every package. So you can actually just do this manually. Yes, it's a manual process, but it's the way you do it. Uh, once you do manually. As I said um, during the course of the presentation, there are other things such as Soiree which can help you um, basically uh, help you with depend uh, dependency resolution. Um, if I remember rightly, Soiree uses this manifest <coughs> in order to do, to do it. But Patrick just wants to keep it like quite simple because it is a simple distribution. It doesn't do any it doesn't basically get in the way. If you want to if you wanted to remove batch on your on your system, I can do it now on laptop with PLO but I can install, I can do whatever I wanted. Um, basically Patrick uh, told me that he assumes the root users only what he's doing. That's pretty much uh, that's the way it's done. Yeah. I think it's probably following the same question, maybe you answered it. So you're saying that if you say there is a, a package is always versus a reference of a full installation. So the definition of a full installation is the context of the manifest file. Now many installations come on you know, full CDs or something. Sorry, well, 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 now, now many distribution, many versions of Slack, but like full CDs. Uh, not right. really, no. So the manifest file on CD1 defines the reference, is that correct? No. I was going to say, actually, it's like we're in the context of Round 2, or you can squeeze it in here for Round 2. The four CDs contain the um, source of the server. Um, no, but basically, the manifest, for example, this one, this manifest file, is in the roots of the Slackware directory. Cool. So, for example, on CDs more than two, I'm not actually sure, but I'm not sure. When the, when the CDs are built, they just contain these, um, a certain number of these directories, whichever one will fit on the CD. But the manifest file contains every single package available. It, it doesn't contain, you don't have the <coughs> manifest file for each CD. Uh, we're saying, 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 we're yeah, the content of the manifest contains the contents of every single package uh, um, available if you have to. So it's, all, it's always in this directory, so it's, it's just in line with Slackware current slash Slackware. <coughs> you also have the manifest file on sources as well. That's like that package. So that's the way you find the manifest